We're going to do the triple evacuation of the air conditioning system. And we're going to do it my way. I have a special way that I do a triple evac. Uh, some of you may agree or disagree, whatever. This is how I developed to do it, and I think it's a good way to do it. My machine is recovered. You can see there's no pressure in. Schraders are removed. There's the vacuum pump down there. It's hooked up and ready to go. I'll show you where my taps are. Now I want to remind you, this machine is a test mule. It's not set up for, uh, for air conditioning. It's just primarily just tests. And so I have taps in odd places. Now right there I have a liquid line tap. Okay, you need a tap that's either at the discharge or the liquid line. I kind of prefer the liquid line because I'm trying to put both of these taps as far opposite sides of the machine as I can. That's going to give me two areas that I can evacuate from. Okay, let's look. Uh, that's the liquid side. Let's take a look at the suction side. Okay, here I've got I've actually got a service valve on the suction side in a real air conditioner. You could actually use that liquid line that's right above that suction valve. And there's probably a port there. Those would be fine. They're far enough away from each other. But in this one, okay, that's my suction port. Okay, one other thing I've done. Okay, I do have another suction port on this thing because it's a heat pump. So it's got a common suction tap. And I put a uh, micron gauge there. Now, the S-Man I'm using has a micron gauge in it. But I kind of like to use a separate one. Because it shows me far away from the manifold gauge set what the vacuum is. We're dealing with very small pressures here. And it's, it's kind of surprising how, how much difference it can make where you put the tap. So anyway, that's where that one is. Let's go back to the pump. Okay, I'm going to start the pump. Open the valve. Make sure everything's tight here. Okay, I'm going to make sure all these hoses are tight. I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to. I'm checking the others to make sure. Don't get Looney Tune on tightening these things, but tighten them down. Okay, the valves are open. I like them back seated. It's better back seated uh, from because uh, uh, here again we're dealing with very small pressure. Okay, you can see we're already pulling down, and uh, I'm going to fire up my other micron gauge. And both of these have to be wide open to start with. This is how we're going to do this. We're going to do the first evacuation. Both sides are open wide. Now my goal is 500 microns. Uh, in the real world, you'll find you don't always get 500 microns. There's just too many things in its way sometimes. But that's what we're going to try for. So when we get down to that vacuum or close to it, I'm going to show you what the next process is. Okay, you can see I put a uh, stopwatch in here. We're about 12 minutes into this thing. We're showing 490 microns. I know the gauge up here says 26.9 or something. I just calibrated the silly thing too. Uh, I don't think those the pressure parts of these are that accurate when we get down here. Okay, let's kind of take a look. You know, I'm showing a pretty good vacuum there, and I've shut the valve off at the uh, vacuum pump. So we're seeing what vacuum is staying in there. And I thought we'd take a look at that other micron gauge. Okay, you can see that one is showing around 850. Uh, the small numbers I don't pay a lot of attention to. I'm going to give this thing a little bit more time because that's the farthest one away from the vacuum pump. And I'd like to try to get this thing down to 500 if I could. Okay, after uh, about 20 minutes, and I got the pump turned off again, I'm sticking about that 850. Uh, probably not going to get any lower than that. I'll show you what it is on the S-Man gauges. 
Okay, it looks like we're at about uh, 500, and that's kind of holding there. Uh, my battery is low. Okay, we are, uh, as you can see up there, about 20 minutes. Okay, that's plenty, I think. I'm not going to get it any better than that. So I'm going to begin my second evacuation. I shut off both valves and the vacuum pump shut off. I'm going to pull this off of here. Okay, normally I would leave the vacuum pump on. I usually don't shut it off. I just shut off the valve. You may be wondering why I put this cheesy little valve in there. Uh, a lot of the pumps come with a built-in valve. I've had so many of them leak that I kind of got pissed and said to heck with it and bought a pump that didn't have a valve at all on it and put my own on. And that thing's actually worked pretty good. So anyway, that's the reason that's there. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this uh, second evacuation. I'm going to put refrigerant in the system. Now, normally, what you're told is to put nitrogen in the system. Ah, sorry guys, uh, I can't see any reason to put a non-condensable gas in there during my evacuation, even if it is dry. Uh, I want everything that's in this system to be refrigerated. And I'm going to do my best to do it this way. Now this is a technical violation of the CFC laws, but it's pretty much in a de minimis range. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. I am going to break this vacuum with R22. Okay, with the valves off on the manifold gauge set, and I'm going to pull the process line off here. I'm going to put the process line here on my refrigerant. Now I'm putting in gas on this refrigerant because this is R22. If this is 410A or any other blend, I could not do this. I'd have to do it as liquid. But I prefer to use gas if I can. Okay, I turn on this valve. I'm going to bleed. Okay, we're going to put gaseous refrigerant, in this case, into the low side. And we're going to watch our gauge. We would like this to come out about zero PSIG. Remember now, I'm putting low. I'm putting refrigerant in the low side, not in the high side, just in the low side to push the non-condensables into the high side. It goes through the compressor and pushes into the high side. Okay, uh, you know, that's pretty close. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evacuate the system using only the high side. Okay, vacuum pumps on, valves closed, hoses hooked up. Open it. Now I've got a vacuum in this line here. Okay, vacuum up to here. I'm going to open this high side and it's going to start pulling out. Back, open, back seat the high side valve. Now it's going to pull out of the high side first, but you'll see it's also coming out of the low side. I'm going to put my timer on it. Okay. I always like to do that just to see how long it takes. Now you can see what I'm looking for on the low side, because I'm pulling out of the high side and using the pressure in the low side to push the contaminants to the high side. I want this to see 20 inches. Okay, you can see it about three and a half minutes in, we're down to 21 inches of mercury. Okay, that's plenty. Now I'm going to go ahead and open both sides now because I pulled most of those contaminants out and we'll let it evacuate all the way down. Now I'm not going to show the third evacuation, but I'm just going to summarize. The first evacuation, both valves wide open. The second evacuation, you break the evacuation with refrigerant into the low side and then pull only out of the high side until you get 20 inches of vacuum. Then you open both wide and let it finish the vacuum. You've done one vacuum 
normally with just both valves wide open and you've done two where you pulled out of the high side and then uh, when it reached 20 inches of vacuum you just uh, did the rest of it. So that's pretty much how to do the triple evacuation. Uh, this is my own idea. I got this idea when I was standing around working on refrigeration systems and I didn't have a lot to do because I'm evacuating the thing and you kind of run out of things to do while you're doing it. So I thought I'm going to develop a method for doing a triple evacuation that I think is about the best we can do. And this is it. So hope you like it.